All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's free webinar in our quarantine series number six. Uh, today's topics, uh, topic is going to be a little bit broad, but I think it's important because uh, we're looking at a lot of uncertainty and a lot of changes. And uh, this is going to be across our entire industry. It was not just the way that shops are being run, but also uh, our supply chain, uh, the kinds of things that we're going to need in our studios, uh, how we're going to deal with our clients, things having to do with certification, uh, you know, our local regulations, and conventions and other public events. How are we going to do these kinds of things? So we've got uh, three panelists here today. Uh, that This includes Liz Cook from Rebel News, and uh, Liz is also uh, involved with product development and things like that. She's uh, got her hand in many aspects of the tattoo industry. We've got uh, Chris uh, Okapi from Cheyenne. And Cheyenne is a company that uh, has, you know, kind of been at the cutting edge for a while. And I've always enjoyed trying out prototypes of their products and working with Chris, who comes by the studio. He's been to many tattoo studios. And I like that about their company uh, to get this kind of feedback. And then we've got Derb Morrison. And a lot of you know uh, Derb because of Hell City, which is a very iconic and important tattoo convention, two of which have been canceled for this year. And uh, Derb also runs True Tattoo Supply, and I've been enjoying watching his posts about new products and things like that that are going to be offered uh, in this new era. And we're going to have some special guests on later on after that, but uh, we're going to start with Liz. So Liz, uh, when are you going to be able to open your studio again? I actually don't know yet. Um, we have been having issues in Texas as far as um, knowing when we're going to actually be able to open. Right now, we are lumped in with the uh, sex industry and bars, from, I guess, from an entertainment standpoint. Um, so there's a lot of backside potential legal stuff kind of going on with a lot of different tattooers out here right now. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of where we're stuck at. So we hope that we're going to be included within a lot of openings out here, but we just don't know yet. Has there been any, any kind of outreach from the tattoo industry towards the state regulators to try to get some sanity into the conversation? All over the place. There's several tattooers um, that are reaching out. Uh, Tony Wayne is one. Sean Brown is one. Jeremy Miller is one out here. Um, Lefty and Shauna down in Waco have been basically protesting not being able to be open by opening their shots, shop and getting... They've both been given citations every day that they've been open in protest. Um, that being said, there's a lot of support out here for what they are doing. Um, and in the uh, forums that me and my husband Cookie have been participating in, it seems that there's a lot of support um, to continue this and push it forward. Uh, talking to lobbyists out here, um, mention of potential lawsuits, if that isn't a direction, but right now it looks like working with a lobbyist is gonna be more productive from that standpoint. So. There is a lot going on. It's just, you know, the wills of the legal system take forever to spin. Yes, yes, this is true. Uh, I know that uh, Derb has worked with some state regulators in the, in the past in uh, helping yeah. develop uh, the regulations in Ohio. And that uh, there was actually a protest scheduled, right? But that didn't yeah. end up having to take place because... Uh, yeah. So we, um, were you being categorized the same way that tattoo businesses in Texas were? Or what was the problem? Uh, we weren't really being categorized incorrectly. We weren't, um, we weren't being given the attention like we were with salons and things like that. We even noticed on you know a lot of the paperwork that was coming over, even on the title of the files, it said like nail salon, barber, this, that, and it didn't say any mention of tattooing. So our fear was that we were just going to be overlooked. Mm. And if we were overlooked when salons and barber shops were allowed to open up this Friday, um, we just wanted our voice to be heard. And it was going to be an educational protest. We weren't going to be out there angry. We are going to be out there saying, hey, we're just as close as barbers. We've, we're, we're trained in bloodborne. Now we're going to need to be trained in airborne. But to let 
the public know that may have a, a, a misconceived notion because we're not allowed to open with these other businesses that tattooing was safe. So that was going to be our mission uh, with the protest all over Ohio is that we're taxed the same, we're trained the same, we're categorized the same until the point that, you know, the reopening things. And that shows you a different view of, of kind of how they look at tattooing. Right. Um, so that was, that was our main goal. And, and it really was a thing that if we don't open, the process is going to happen. Now we're, we just got news yesterday. We're going to be able to reopen. I don't know if they heard our voice and actually was like, yeah, we need to lump them in. But until then, literally, there was no mention of, of tattoo studios opening. So we're all we're, we're pretty afraid that we weren't going to be able to open. But Do you now think there's other states should consider this kind of uh, an approach. Like, for instance, in Texas, do you think that... Uh, do you think that had anything to do with their decision, uh, the fact that this protest was scheduled, or uh, how? what do you think caused it? The, the I think it definitely brought attention. I know we were all reaching out to the governor and, and tagging everybody, and it really took legs pretty pretty quick, and I think it brought awareness. I'm not going to say that's exactly what made them categorize it in, but I think that that is a way for your local, like in Texas with the problems that Liz is having, is to let them know we're going to speak up. You know, If you don't mention us and you're going to – put us in all these other categories until that point of reopening, you know, we, we're a safe industry. We go above and beyond to be safe. I go to the dentist and see things they're doing wrong. Yeah. I think many you of know? us have asked the dentist to change their gloves. But, uh, yeah. But the, so the public doesn't realize that, that tattooing is that safe. The governor who's, I mean, I hate to say this too, but it's a generational thing too. Like still there's older generations that are in power that, that, that have these laws and, you know, powers essentially that, view things differently because of the generation you know and i'm not trying to say that but i'm saying i think that that had a factor in it to the point where a lot of young people spoke up and this is our livelihoods we're safe and that that brought attention to it i definitely think okay well okay back to to liz then so in texas uh you know maybe okay so in a couple different places i know that that derb posted something about this and i saw this other uh tattooer in new mexico Leo Gonzalez posted about uh, a, a COVID safety certification that they're able to get in his shop. Do they offer anything like that in Texas? Is this becoming widespread yet? I don't think so. The only thing that I've seen online has been a barbicide COVID certification. I did which, that once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, I was doing desperately doing anything, you know. Yeah, um, largely it's the same thing like what you were saying, Derb. We've been overlooked. Uh, the beauty salons have been open. And it's really unfortunate out here, too, because the, a lot of the beauty salons in Dallas, for example, are doing permanent makeup. And it's uh, it, there's no it doesn't have any it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, I don't know if they're necessarily allowed to do it in there, but they're open. They're going to have customers. There's not going to be there's. I think we have like maybe two or three health inspectors in all of Texas. How could they possibly police it? And that's not their job anyway. I mean, I mean, I guess it is. Lefty and Shauna are getting cert citations, but they they're open, so technically they can do permanent makeup now, which absolutely is tattooing. Yes, yeah, yes, uh, and probably a, a lot closer contact uh, between you know, like the spacing of workstations. Oh, yeah. So, Liz, here's a question. Uh, is your shop uh, an open kind of plan or do you have separate rooms or how does that work? We have separate rooms at our Louisville studio uh, and then we have some like an open pit. Our Dallas shop is an open pit. Uh, so there's, you know, there's concerns as, as far as the privacy, but as far as the spacing, we've been able to uh, have a extremely generous around amount of spacing i think it's something like 10 by 10 square feet minimum that artists have per their area um so as far as social distancing is concerned we definitely are able to meet standards and that's just our day-to-day -day anyway right right yeah so i mean this is a shift because we're used to the idea of bloodborne pathogens and limiting, you know, that, you know, we have our disposable surfaces or the surfaces that we know we're going to be spraying down and we have the way that we handle things. But now we have this airborne situation. It's a different ballgame right? now. Yep. Yes. 
yes. So uh, what are some of the things that your artists are planning on doing uh, when you are allowed to reopen uh, besides the obvious masks mask now? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think different locations are going to be affected a lot differently depending on their hotspots and whatnot. Um, we have been really fortunate to not really be in concentrated hotspots. So right now, outside of tattoo studios, uh, other businesses, doctor's offices and stuff like that, their general kind of routine is check your temperature, make sure you're wearing a mask, ask you questions. Outside of that, they're not really doing anything additional so I can't imagine that being a constraint that we're going to have imposed on us it, with legislation or whatever that would be. And if it was, it would seem a little bit, it, it would seem like it's just not necessary for what yeah, we're doing and how much more proactive we are anywhere in our studio with bloodborne pathogen, with how much cleaner we are. So that's a reality. Studios are pretty damn clean already. Yeah. I mean, every surface we're aware of, every door handle, everything. So I think the tattoo industry is like 10 steps, you know, in front of like the Joe and fabric worker. That's Absolutely. Gonna learn all this stuff. By and large, yeah. <laughs> you well, know. you know, in fact, I think there's a possibility that we may have this moment of reckoning in a few weeks or, or, or months where the media is sort of looking back at, okay, where were those super spreader spots? Mm -hmm. Right. Of course, we're going to have some nightclubs and things like that. Yeah. And there will be that one really dirty tattoo shop. Right. And <laughs> our industry, we that's who they're going to hone in on. Yeah, of course. Right. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to, you know, wash over the fact that the rest of us are going to be setting, uh, you know, an example of new high standards that many other yeah. industries, including dentistry, et cetera, will be, you know, far behind, uh, yeah. I believe. We've all talked, um, you know, the industry, a thinning of the herd of studios and things like that. And hopefully those are the studios that like we don't put up with that shit anymore. Like we'll call yeah. you out if we hear you. But So I think that that, yeah, that's going to change a lot, too, is like it's going to thin the herd a little bit. You know, um, hopefully those studios that we're talking about, people don't support those. You know, people it's a different age. It's a different fear. It's a different airborne, bloodborne world. You know, and I think that people are going to be more aware to go into people's little shitty, dirty shops that don't do the mm -hmm. proper protocols. Or they, if you don't feel like you properly sanitize and they're doing the procedures, people aren't going to deal with that because they got to go back to their families now. So it's it's not just dealing with, you know, staff. Well, so unfortunately, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be simple enough that they'll walk into a, a tattoo shop and see they're wearing masks and think, OK, we're all good. True. Yeah. yeah. From me, the rest of the place is so. Uh, I mean, there's just like we've always had on our hands, there's this educating the public task. Yeah, and definitely. You're going to have to kind of do it all over again in terms of what you need to look for when you walk into a tattoo studio and, and uh, you know, what are, what are the red flags? Yeah. Uh, remember when we used to say, oh, you, you need to make sure the shop has an autoclave. Um, how times have changed, right? God damn. Yeah, it really has, man. You know, and this, like I said, the whole airborne thing, like we all need to retrain. You know, it's pretty to us. It's common sense. It's it's cross contamination just in a different way. You know, um, I think a lot of the procedures to studios when you enter are going to be vastly different. You know, to the to the studios sanitizing sanitizing areas, and then when you go into the the, the clients' room, sanitizing areas and those as well. So I think that's a lot of the procedures going to be sanitizing yourself, masks on any items that are brought in need to be sanitized at least till we get through this. I don't think it's going to be like this forever, but it could be a few years. Definitely. It could be seasonal too. We might, it could be. That, uh, we're going to have a permanent COVID season. And during that period, some uh, studios and other businesses might choose to just take a hiatus. There might be a two month business hiatus that, that yeah. happens and, you know, everything from, uh, you know, tattooing to massage to, uh, hair to you know all these close up personal things there may just be an off season or, or though it might just be a period when we have to implement all these extra precautions but I think certain things are going to stay with us all year I yeah so I would like to get Chris from Cheyenne and uh, on the conversation too uh, you know 
like I was saying, Cheyenne has uh, always been kind of at the cutting edge uh, in developing products. I'm just curious uh, to start out with if there's anything in the uh, in the pipeline that this current crisis has uh, either caused uh, Cheyenne to start thinking about developing or if there are any uh, requests from sponsored artists or clients that uh, are saying, hey, what, what, should, what should we look for here? Are you going to have this? Like, what's changing right now about manufacturing right now in, in Tantil? What are people's concerns? Do we still have Chris on the line? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, it's, it's hard to say um, what new products will come up because that's nothing we would talk as a company on a live stream. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, but, of course, it's... Um, even with this COVID-19 stuff, it's for us from the, from the perspective as a company, uh, and especially as a German company, it's not really something new we have to, to focus on because we're already being focused on being really safe and testing everything. So for us or our products, what we provide, it's, it's not really a thing if it's COVID-19 or it's a flu or hepatitis or anything because we're already thinking about all this stuff and to reduce uh, cross-contamination as much as possible. So for us, it's, we, we're just seeing that the whole industry is um, really concerned, but that's more because everybody had to stop working. So everybody had to refocus. And now there's way more regulations probably coming up or already coming up state by state. And I think that's an interesting point for every tattooer and also every company in the business. Because from I'm our side... I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I'm curious about what the difference is uh, from a European perspective. Uh, you know, from one state to the next, uh, I think we're going to see big differences. But I think that over in Europe, a lot of studios are getting to, back to work a little earlier and probably have a little bit more experience already and, uh, you know, running into some of the limitations. I'm curious uh, what the differences have been so far over there versus what you're hearing about over here. Well, the biggest difference at the moment is that we already open up states again. So a lot of tattooers can go back to work and they're going back to work. So far, the most of them does, don't have an effect. So the people I spoke with, they don't have any effect so far. So they're still fully booked. And of course, I think there will be a couple of artists, especially when you're like not a famous Instagram artist and you have to walk in shops stuff. I think that could slow down a little, but from my personal perspective, I think the economic crisis didn't hit us that hard yet. Especially in Europe, not because we have a lot of social benefits. So it's a totally different perspective for Europeans or Americans. I think that, uh, you know, tattooing in general is a little more resilient than some other industries. And you would think otherwise, because it's not like food. You can live without it. But uh, it's as old as cave paintings, though. It's always in here. Market, everybody was getting foreclosed on and we were still staying pretty busy. People People like being able to buy something that can never be repossessed, I guess. Uh, and I think that's uh, often with luxury products. Yeah. That's nice to hear too, Chris, that, that artists are back to work and they're all booked up. Because that's like one of my underlying fears is that when the industry does, you know, open back up in the studio, like, can you keep your artists busy? Is, or, you know, financially, are people ready to, to, you know, get tattooed again and things like that? So it's nice to hear uh, that the economy's you know, up and running as far as tattoo artists staying booked because I mean I, I can only everybody. speak for the people I talked with, but I think like in epicenters like North Italy, there will be still there's still a lot of registrations, but Germany closed the borders pretty quick and the most citizens are pretty happy with what the government decided to do. Yeah. And we Germans are also pretty good in following rules, so <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things about being here in America is uh, we're, we're not, we don't like rules. And uh, <laughs> that's both a great thing and a terrible thing, you know, at the same time. Uh, you know, we, uh, 
we're, we're going to figure out the right way to open a tattoo studio because we refuse to not do it, right? And if we wait long enough, I think part of the problem is that people are waiting for a moment when everything is safe. And uh, I think we're not going to see that for, for a minute here. You know, we're looking yes. at 15 months or something like that before we have a vaccine. And even yep. then, like this, this idea of like a herd immunity or, you know, will a vaccine even last? Will it be like a vaccine where every year you need a different one? Uh, so it's, it's all not in the air right now. Waiting until it's safe. That's not an option. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, people need to eat. It's, yeah. uh, we don't have those safety nets like Chris is talking about over in Germany. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, we have to be able to, to figure something out. And, uh, so the studios that are opening first, like in Georgia, now I know uh, I was trying to get Dino Cook on here. Uh, and I, I know that he's been back to work and he's an extremely meticulous person. You know, uh, like when you see his photographs, there's no Photoshop there. He just makes sure there's not a single spot of lint anywhere. And so I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, what he's doing. We're going to have Litos on a little bit later. They're not allowing Florida tattoo shops to open yet. But in preparation, uh, they've been making changes to their studio, including since there's no waiting room area anymore, uh, using that space to increase the distance between uh, the, the workstations, which, you know, is we're, we're going to do that here. I mean, in our studio, every uh, workstation is on wheels. So, you know, that's that's something we can just easily do. But uh, it's something that a lot of uh, tattoo studios are having to, you know, really look at their layout and say, wow, does this, this really work? Yeah, that's the way the old, um, the old Red Tree Gallery before I moved to this new location. I'm fortunate enough to have just, you know, got this place up and running months ago, but like our old studios, like what Liz was talking about, just elbows to assholes, you know, just workstation next to workstation. It was cool because it's like this barber style of, you know, of tattooing, which is fun. It's good for the camaraderie of the room and stuff like that. We moved in here back in, in August. Um, and luckily we have separated rooms. A couple of the rooms had two artists in them. So I've moved artists apart and things like that. But um, yeah, I think the days right now of those shops, people are going to have to create barriers or curtains or there's going to need to be some kind of solution to those studios that can't relocate right now either, you know. Gigantic sheets of plexiglass. Uh, who knows? Yeah, it's, who knows? It's a strange thing, but, uh, you know, that eventually some kind of a law or something or another is going to clarify around this, and hopefully we'll be able to have a say in that. Yeah, definitely. So uh, how long has every everyone been closed? Uh like here, uh, you know, I mean, it's been a couple months since Michelle and I have tattooed. Uh, I think the official shutdown was about six weeks ago. And we've got another three weeks to go, I believe, uh, until they're going to consider it, you know. Uh, so you guys got the 15th. And Liz, you've got no idea still? <laughs> Not really. I mean, it, we thought it was going to be, you know, lumping with beauty salons and stuff, and that didn't happen. So... We're kind of just up in the air right now. When did you have to close? I think, I want to say it was around maybe like the week of the 16th or the week of the 23rd of March. Okay, mm -hmm. so going on two months with no student yeah. income, no artist income. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it hit everybody so, so quickly. Nobody had time to prepare. Nobody had been like, okay, next month we got to shut down. So let's like discontinue these like, bills or like we don't need netflix or well you need netflix now but i'm saying <laughs> but nobody really had time to prepare for for balancing out income versus expense and things yeah. like that yeah but typically typically i don't really book people in january february because you know sometimes it results in having to make last minute scheduling changes because of crap weather and and so i had this giant cluster of awesome big money projects booked for late march and april and no no Oh, oh man. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we, you know, I was already planning on taking off from maternity leave, so I had a lot of people scheduled in, and then I was like, oh, you can't tattoo right now anyway. So, like, a real, you know, looking at the finances and looking at everything, you know, thinking about, like, okay, well, income that would have been from the shop versus what I would have been tattooing, and, you know, it's 
it it makes you kind of concentrate on what really is important to get through. Yeah, you're very, very true. Yep. Luckily, I've been, um, we haven't been in the studio or anything, but I've, I've been fortunate enough to have the True Tattoo Supply doing the orders online. That's the only thing that's made me feel like there's any kind of normalcy to my day. Yeah. To tell you the truth, is coming in. Like, I look forward to like packing orders, you know, which is uh, a rarity. Um, but lately, that's been my job. Yeah. You know, same here. Right? My worker, there's only two of us out of 16 people. There's two people here running this place the last like two months, you know, and I'm getting used to it. You know, I'm yeah. now a professional packager, I guess. <laughs> Processing orders for Ever After Pigments has been a thing, answering inquiries. And now it's also, I mean, there's always silver lining. It's really allowed, you know, time to like teach people color theory via email, which would have been just impossible with the, the time that I time. Really yeah, didn't have course. available. Yeah. So it's like, have you thought of this? What about this? Yeah, that's kind of the, some of the aspects I like. I mean, about the mandatory vacation is that is we're all in such a high gear all the time. This is one thing I've been thinking about is like I'm constant. I've been grinding for 30 years tattooing and like yeah. waking up and working, working, working. And with this downtime, it's kind of allowed me to look, like enjoy life a little more or not feel like I need to get on 50 emails and stuff like that. So I'm I've been telling people too to enjoy this moment, you know, not financially, but just mentally try to enjoy it for the, the vacation. It is from the, it's the last time we're going to be in low gear. Once they find that vaccine, everybody's going to go back in fifth gear. Just, you know. yeah. yeah, I've been nonstop working on projects that have been pushed off and pushed off and just kind of all the little extra stuff like gosh i never have time for this i really need to do this yeah and just, you know i've i feel like i've actually been working longer days now because i'm just sitting there on the couch working on my laptop which is great trying to stay <laughs> busy yeah. yeah so okay not, right to, not to change the subject but uh since we're talking about the the big sweeping changes some of the things that were hearing discussion of is tracking okay so let's just say hypothetically that your studio is open and everyone's humming along making money doing great tattoos everyone's happy to be back at work and then you get a call from somebody's client saying hey i just tested positive i was in there uh seven days ago so then boom what do you do do you have to you know, figure out everybody that that artist has worked on and, and all the people that they've been in contact with. Does everybody have to get tested? So this is going to be one of the, the new things that, I mean, it's not in place yet, but we're, uh, we're told that this is not something that the government is going to do, this kind yeah. of tracking. It's going to be upon uh, us, the businesses, to do this tracking. And uh, that introduces a whole tricky new thing and and a lot of people aren't going to like it uh, does anyone have any thoughts on that actually before before i ask either of you i wanted to go back to chris for a moment because i know that uh you know over there in europe with people a little more willing to follow rules there's a lot of this kind of tracking already in place have you heard anything about this having to do with tattoo studios well so far for tattoo studios every tattoo studio in the state who can reopen uh, they have to provide a hygienic concept, which is not specified how it has to look like. And some states um, said that the town where the artist is living have to make new regulations. So it's even here in Germany, it's a little unclear at the moment. But because you, you talked about like tracking people, um, the first state to reopen restaurants with like safety distance of two meters between tables. Um, well, like when you are a guest there, you need your ID and they write down your address and the name and also phone number and email so they could inform you about that. Right. So we may have to do something where anyone who fills out a uh, release form, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we could track our clients through that in terms of, you know, being able to just contact everybody on the list starting at whatever date saying, um, I'm sorry to inform you that a client that uh, we worked on uh, prior to your appointment has tested positive. You're going to have to, what a drag. I don't even like saying this stuff. <laughs> well, I don't mean the, the other 
step is so we're still depending on people to actually contact us if that happens mm -hmm. yes. so there's still that big issue and especially here in in you know dallas where people don't necessarily know that that's what they're sick with because a lot of the doctors out here are still like well if you are sick just stay home so we still have to kind of consider that at some point this could still be treated the same way flu has been treated in the past where we don't really get that notification and we just kind of have to assume that you're sick, you either have it or you don't have it. When we were in, and not that it would be the same, but when we were um, back in Australia during swine flu, by the end of it, everybody had it. If you got sick, you had it. There was no there was no point of even going to the doctor. They just told us just stay home and get over it. And I think at that point also there were mutations and, um, you know, it was, it was crazy. It was different, but we, you know, it didn't get to the point of what it, you know, COVID has happened in the state. So it's interesting to see how we would go forward if it is going to be okay, we need to contact people. We, you know, we need to go out of our way to, you know, call our own clients a couple of weeks after we've seen them or, you know, every couple of days to be like, just checking on you, send in an email out, please. If you've had symptoms, let us know so we can, you know, manage it. Is that something we're going to have to do? And obviously not every studio is going to be prepared to do that. We can do that because we've got shop managers and stuff like that. But, you know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of admin work that isn't I think, necessarily that fun. I think that when we when we tattoo our clients, we're not just sitting with them for like five, ten minutes. Like, so we have like this brief moment to be like, okay, if you get sick, come back and see me. We have hours to sit there with them and be like, hey, listen, you know, this is what's going on. That's if true. you feel anything, please reach out to us. And we have enough time, I think, to to kind of instill that in our clients. I think our clients are going to be aware of that too. Um, I think the communication, like Liz said, the communication of everything is going to be the most important thing, like pre-communication, consultation, appointments before you come in that day. How are you feeling that day? So a lot of it's going to be a lot more work with clients and artists to, to communicate just constant. But it's going to be crucial. I think that's going to be one of the, the big factors, too. And after communication, like Liz says, are we going to have to reach out? You know, I, I think that that is going to be part of it, too. Like, let me know how you're feeling when your tattoos healed. You know, let me know that too and how you're feeling when it's healed. Cause that'll be what, like a week, you know, seven days after. So just, I think it's going to be a lot of communication and a lot of communication before they walk in your door and after they leave. And I feel like we're already, I mean, I feel like it's something that I already do because I'm just so OCD and I have issues and I have, I mean, I'm allergic to every like perfume and deodorant. So I'm already contacting my clients beforehand please don't wear anything when you come in and you know now that we're having a baby it's you know obviously that's something that i would be doing we would be doing anyway because that's a concern the next step is you know is it fair to ask for that for people that aren't necessarily at risk or have issues and where do we draw that line and is it something that's going to be accepted by the you know the tattoo industry across the board because we can, you know, tell people that you should do this, but if people are really going to do it, we still have to, you know, there still has to be that acceptance of it of like, yeah, we do need to do this. So, okay, let's, let's change track again uh, for a minute here uh, and talk about conventions. So. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. So, let's okay. talk about Group social <laughs> events. If, if we can't have a waiting room in our tattoo studio where where a couple of different collectors can sit next to each other on a bench and uh, have a coffee and talk tattoos, how can we have a convention? How on earth are we going to move forward? How are we going to have concerts? How are we going to have sporting events? How are we going to have any of this? I mean, it's it's all one big lump of social interaction, not just tattoo conventions. I think. I mean, the same reason why I've already canceled Hell City for August, because I think people are still going to be uncomfortable even by August from the PTSD from all of this, the financial recourse, all that stuff. So I've made the decision to, you know, I look at life's canceled for 2020, everyone, <laughs> you know, and that's that's kind of the reality I'm taking. When we come back, I don't know what's going to be. I mean, they develop a vaccine or a series of drugs that are easy to get uh, llamas. Come on, praying for llamas to be the the answer for all this. I don't know if you heard about that. <laughs> um, 
but no, conventions are going to feel different. You know, socially, they're going to feel different. Human social interaction forever is going to feel different, I think. Um, and I, and right now, I don't, I don't know, because it, it depends on the walls and the social gatherings. And we'll start seeing little gatherings happening again. And I think that'll be the test to see how conventions are going to do. The one reason I canceled, too, because I don't want to spend and spend all this money and have like 50 people feel comfortable enough to come out in August. And I just spent like $70,000 to put on a show. You know, so it's one of those things where I don't know how we're going to come back from it. I don't know how booths, you know, you got to put a booth in between every booth or, you know, booths can't be right next to each other anymore. So there's a lot of, you know, things like that. You got to have like check marks at this main stage where you can have like 40 people at the main stage watching the competitions. Mm. There's a lot oh. of, yeah, a lot of factors where people can stand, you know, as they're walking through, it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I have to wait for that guy to move from that square before I can check out that booth. And you can't uh, just step in your buddy's booth to look at what they're working on. You, you know, know they're working on. Pop in. The one thing besides us, you know, conquering the virus, which you know that's a tough one, would be if we could come up with some kind of cheap instant testing. You know, I mean, like yeah. a pregnancy test, or even better. You know, just a, just a really s small, cheap swab-related thing that everyone could do at the door. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. And if they are positive, uh, the truck comes and, you know, everybody dot a straight jacket on them. Yeah. Choke uh, them out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know if we're if we're heading towards a future where one day you'll get a text saying, hey, uh, it's, it turns out that it's Sunday at 342 p.m. You walk by somebody on the sidewalk uh, who's tested positive. Uh, you need to stay in your apartment until a courier brings you to your test. God damn. Yeah, I don't know if we're headed towards that or if this is something that we're going to assimilate and uh, the most vulnerable people will just die from it or, yeah. you know. Liz mentioned that, that that's one of those things like it's going to go around. It's it's already flu and cold season and all that. And that's what viruses do. It's unfortunate. This one's the scary one with this is that it takes so long to see the signs. If it well, was more of like a so transmissible i mean there's so many things about it yeah man you know children walk around with it for weeks or months without showing signs spreading it to everyone you know school become uh you know a no-go zone you've got uh the fact that it can hang out in the air i mean you can walk past a jogger and and a couple minutes after they jog past that spot in, in theory you know i mean there's all these things that yeah like super bug uh I've heard it's already, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I've heard it's already mutated. So that you have COVID K, which is COVID kids. And then you have COVID GI, which one of my buddies thinks he had, which is one that affects your gastrointestinal. And then COVID whatever, 19, that is more asthmatic and, uh, you know, flu-like. So I don't know if that's true or not. The viruses that specialize in bats apparently are, apparently bats have really vigorous viruses. And so bat specialist viruses are on this sort of like on steroids when it comes to their adaptation and mutation. And that, that's what we're dealing with. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But uh, we will survive. We definitely uh, we've got this. You know, it's just going to be interesting to, to see what that's going to mean. And, Let's talk uh, about like modernly too, like. Just with this, with uh, with us able to to FaceTime and communicate better than the Spanish flu, like we can all communicate so much better. We're going to conquer this thing a lot faster than you know than we could have back in 1918. Um, so yeah, I'm confident. You know, I think it's definitely going to take at least a year, um, maybe two. Yeah. Well, there's also we um you know we have so much more understanding now of what it is to cross contaminate and simple things like covering your mouth and also not touching other services and spreading germs and stuff like that, where, you know, being a tattoo artist in our industry, we're super hyper aware of that, but we're also super hyper aware that not everybody else is aware of that. So if this is even just, just enough to get people to be like, Oh, I just, you know, I need to wash my hands because I just sneezed in them and not touch surfaces. And I mean, just being out here, you know, I see people at the gas station cross contaminating. They're still not understanding it. So if there's a push to have the larger population everywhere actually understand what it means to not cross contaminate, 
hopefully, you know, that's a silver lining thing that happens as well. Yes. A lot of people don't even know the word cross contaminate. Yeah. That's a scary part. They have no theory about it. They've never had to deal with it. Well, and, you know, from this, they're going to be mostly learning about airborne kind of stuff. You know, the idea of touching surfaces, that, that invisible wet paint kind of thing. You know, that's, that's something that you kind of have to be trained into. And as a result of wearing gloves, it's easier for us to think like, oh, I've got the gloves on, so I'm not going to touch the lamppost, right? Uh, where if you don't have gloves and you're just trying to think in terms of, oh, I just touched this, I shouldn't touch that. That's a little more challenging, especially for somebody mm -hmm. who doesn't have this kind of training or experience. Yeah, because yeah. it is. It's repetitive, like everyday tattooing. And just you just naturally yeah. get the flow of that type of stuff. But to get used to that, when I first started tattooing, you'd be like, oh, shit, yeah, um, crap. You know, and you kind of – but now it's just natural. So hopefully humanity catches on to that. Be nice. Yeah. <laughs> So we've got another guest, uh, Litos, is going to be joining us, and he was going to walk us through the changes that they've made uh, to their studio down there in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. And Florida is not allowing tattoo studios to open yet. They're going to be in the next phase, uh, you know, ironically, dining establishments, which I think would be far higher risk, are being allowed to open first. But I also believe that a lot of these places, if they can't reopen, they're just going to die and uh, you know, I mean, a lot of these restaurants are independently owned and I mean, there's definitely two sides to this story. You know, it's someone's life dream to make this restaurant. It's their savings. They're not going to be able to do it again. And if they can't reopen, they're going to have to lay everybody off permanently and, and sell their assets. So I get that. But uh, at the same time, tattoo studios are much lower risk as, as we all know. But uh, of course, we've got the challenge of trying to convince our state regulators. But, uh, Litos, are you uh, on board? Bring them on, Gabe. All right. There we are. Yeah. Welcome. Litos, you got to click your mic. Oh, that's nope. your uh, presenting. <laughs> Okay. You want to stop presenting? Click the mic. Fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> Fuck it. We're doing it live. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, nope, we'll get be back. back on in a second. And uh, so, yeah, the last time we spoke to him, he was wearing both a mask and face shield, just as kind of a demonstration. And Derb, I know you guys have face shields in the True Supply catalog yeah. now. And this is something that you would wear in addition to a mask, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. You can, you can wear it in addition to the mask. I, don't, I know Lito's last time had the mask and the face shield. And that was a great combo, actually. It's perfect. And a lot of people might find this to be pretty confining, but uh, I'm pretty sure you could get used to it. Litos, do you, uh, do you hear us now? Okay, there should he be can, a He can hear us, but he needs to click the uh, mic button. There can we go. you guys hear me now? Bingo, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. I can't see you. Yeah, I can't see the camera here. All right, let's put that. There you are. And this worked last time. It's all good. We can see him and hear him. Yep, okay. I can't see everybody. How can I see oh, you? Bingo. There you are. Here? All right. Hey. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so let's hear a little bit about the phases in Florida when it comes to reopening. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, but it's not working here for me. Well, just give it a go. Look into the camera and talk. Yeah, the, the webcast going out looks fine. So. Are you guys there? Yeah. I can see you fine. I can't see anyone. Okay, don't worry about it. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, we're gonna have to work with that, and um, you'll be able to see the re uh, the replay where, where you'll see how it actually. For, I can yeah. hear you fine. Okay, well, it's I, it's echoing a lot. Okay, you got headphones on. Yeah, I don't know why it's echoing. I'm not hearing the echo here. Nope. So far, everything is going out perfect, Lido. So if you just uh, roll with it. Yeah, we're just going to... Everyone looks very pretty. 
it looks great. <laughs> it sounds great on this end. I'm sorry that you're not hearing it as clearly, but we're uh, hoping that you can give us a walkthrough. You told me last time we spoke that you've been uh, changing the uh, facing on the uh, workstations there. And uh, I'm, I'm curious also about uh, anything else that you're going to be doing. And it's all... It's all Litos, you are currently presenting, and it's possible that you have the stream going in the background. Got it. Oh, I got it. But you want to turn off the presentation that you're presenting. <laughs> got it. So I'm not a tech guy. That's cool. Stop presenting. Okay. Ah, perfect. <laughs> there we go. No, and I do, can't see you guys, but I can at least uh, be present there. Yeah, we can all see and hear you pretty well now. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. How is everybody? Man, yeah. that's tough. <laughs> yeah. I should take my temperature right now. <laughs> Look like you're sweating off that one. Holy crap. All right. How is everybody? Oh, good, we're, doing good. we're doing good. We're talking about the, you know, the, the prospect of reopening. And I wanted to hear a little bit about the phases that Florida is dealing with, because I know that this is the case in a lot of states, uh, although every state is different. Yes, it, uh, it is pathetic because when, when I got here in the studio, I actually just got a call from the uh, state representative and they actually called uh, the governor and asked questions about the tattoo and why it wasn't on phase one. And unfortunately, I don't think we still got the, the right ear to, to listen to our uh, voice yet because they said we're probably... Not even going to open on the second phase, which is really scary. Um, so we we are in this position now to where um, we have to get some kind of a eyes and ears to, to our situation because out of the list that we are part of, like the barbershops and the hair salons and everything else, I hate to say it, we are the most qualified and prepared professionals to be the ones who actually can pave the way for safety and awareness and everything else. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has to follow footsteps, they have to follow, I feel, our footsteps because we have so much things, uh, so many things that we're doing uh, because of our qualifications, you know, and that's, uh, that's, that's how I feel on that. Do you think that, uh, I mean, I know that Florida was, you know, notorious for having that requirement that you needed a doctor on staff. And, and finally, you could just have like a signed contract with a doctor at one point. But there's always been sort of like extra layers of regulation there. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Or do you think it's just like sort of an invisibility problem uh, like they were having in Ohio? Yeah, I, I think so. I think there was a, I think that issue is it's been long gone. Uh, because we actually uh, lobbyists to actually change those elements and actually put the responsibility on the health department to be the one that actually got a little bit of a, a coordinated supervise, uh, supervised uh, uh, issue on that. So the doctors are not really the issue. I think it's the stigma of tattooing. Uh, it still exists. And the first response anybody in power will get will be a well, tattoo ad just with the xylo sides it's an older generation and, yeah those, that's those just, just uh, that's stereotyping uh, right and uh we all part of it you know i hate to put that word in that even that element to the conversation because it's sad that everybody uh in some way shape or form is it's part of it or, or or suffer the consequences for that but besides that uh i i don't look at things like that i look at the uh whatever long it takes we are going to be pushing as much as we can to get our voices heard and uh, and uh, clarifying the, the whole problems. I think you guys were talking before um, about what's going on right now, the opening and, you know, all the, the, the uh, topics you guys uh, touched on. And I think one of the biggest ones will be the concern of the aftermath when we open what's going to happen afterwards. And I think that's why we actually uh, took upon ourselves to actually contract a, a law firm to actually represent us. And I wrote this, this letter with this guidelines. And the whole idea with that is that we might be even open, I hope so, be even open before I can even exercise this letter. But by having this document, I want to make sure that something in the future 
very near future and of, of would not happen. And we can be um, not segregated from the category because I think that category, uh, category is very uh, comfortable for us to be in for many reasons. Uh, but to really clarify that we have a lot to give uh, uh, as far as comfort and, and, and qualifications and, and all the above that comes down to it. So my intention of the letter to actually bring it to change, get some kind of topic to where we have a little bit of more of a hold or bring the attention so we're not being left in the left field. Do you think that it would uh, make sense to uh, do something like what they were about to do in Ohio, uh, get a bunch of tattooers together and stage some kind of an educational protest? Uh, you know, I mean, not that you should have to do that, but if, if it seems like nobody's state, hearing you, though, if the state is not noticing your, your struggle and they're not going to notice it through the regular channels, uh, I mean, that certainly would at least uh, turn the media's attention to it and maybe uh, give the tattoo industry a little bit of positive press. Yeah, I think, you know, when Dorby got the idea of doing that, I thought, I thought it was a great idea. I even called him up and said, man, they're just let's do it all together. You know, not only yeah. that, you know, uh, and luckily, you know, he was able to get some kind of response. Uh, Definitely. If it was affected by that or not, that would be irrelevant. But just the... Uh, the initiative to bring something like that, I think that is important. And the more you put eyes on the issue, the better. And the more people unite, um, it would open that door a little easier. And, yeah. you know, just to, a, a, as simple as, it's not only the, what we have to show by facts, is the fact that there's things out there by facts and examples that I experienced. It was a story Really quick, I ordered some food to take out. I went to drive there because I couldn't uh, get anybody on the phone. So I said, you know what? I really felt like having this food. So I go to this restaurant, very well-known corporate brand here. When I got there, it was pouring rain. It was cars everywhere. There's people lined up in the back. Not only they were in cars in lines, but there were people in lines to the takeout store, which you don't do that. And then I walked inside with my mask on and I asked, listen, I've been calling. There's no communication. Well, we took the phone off the hook. As you can see, it's the busiest day we ever had. And I look around and the place was packed. And here's a state that has 25% of capacity that's allowed to. And here I am sitting around these people that every single table, every single stool, Everybody from outside now are inside, lined up in the back, waiting for their food. So because of the rain. Court, that's out of control. I wanted to tape and take photos and for the respect of the people with the families and everything else, because it was specifically Mother's Day. And I walked out. I didn't get anything. And I thought about it. Say, you know what? I'm going to talk to my attorney and tell him that if anything comes out of this, a big corporation like that that has regulations of 25% and is breaking the law, even though I don't have any photos or videos, they can go and subpoena their books of Mother's Day, and they're going to see how many tables they serve and how many takeouts they took. It's on the numbers. So the proof is in there. So I, that's that was a scary moment, man. It's that's like a wealth cool. over health moment. Yeah, pretty much. You know, they just took a chance. It's like, you know what? We got all these people here. They want to eat and we have no control. And it's this is the thing, too. People are very sensitive uh, because we've been sitting in and want to go out and everything else. People get into fights because you're not wanting to put your mask on or whatever it is. It's not by being defiant. It's about following rules for the safety of everyone. Uh, as long as you understand that, you know what? Don't go out if you're just going to be there to cause trouble and be defiant about it. Yeah, we all have yeah. our thought process and our idealistic, you know, uh, position, and that shouldn't interfere with what the fact is. You know what? That's just take it easy. There's no need for chaotic. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy enough time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't need to exercise my right to breathe in your face. You know, that's... <laughs> That's not the kind of freedom that people need right now. Exactly. Yep. So uh, I was wondering if you had anything to show us in terms of changes that you've made to your studio in preparation for reopening. Yes, I, I do. Uh, let me try to show some things why I'm sitting and I'm trying to get my computer and actually walk with you guys. And I actually uh, wanted to share it because there was uh, one of the questions that one of the viewers asked 
and it was uh, how, how to check clients in. Uh, they didn't know how to do that. And the first step would be pretty much communicating with your client beforehand. Uh, and another topic that was just uh, touched on is the fact that um, educating your clientele is the, the key. And what I strive my business on as a family business is the fact that we personally call everyone. We text them, we hear their voice, and we connect on that level. And I think this is a chance that some people, because of the distance, are going to be able to identify and realize that they should be doing that all along. You know, making the convenience aspect of having people with emails and everything else, that's great. We can't really uh, attach to every single one personally, but we can sure try. And I, and we've been doing a, a good job doing so, and we're getting a lot of support. So beforehand, uh, we will communicate with the client. I actually put a list of uh, questions that, let's go step by step when they come to the door. Um, Let's just say that the doors are closed or locked because you're really not allowed to lock your doors for fire hazard and safety issues. So let's just keep it at that. Uh, but there'll be a questionnaire at the door that actually we can try to somehow, you know, it'll be hard to kind of read everything here, but this is a questionnaire that we prepared and I'm willing to share with everybody. We can try to find out anything that we talk about it here, maybe create another link uh, to where people can reach out and actually be beneficial for their business. And uh, I'm willing to, to, to share whatever I created and whatever I actually got the idea from other artists too, like everybody else. Uh, we have signs outside, which we're able to share as well, which would be obviously for your studio. But we put this at the door uh, for two reasons. Because the, if the door might happen to be closed, and somebody comes in as a walk-in person without an appointment, they will be stopped at the door, but they will be notified that all you have to do is call the studio and, uh, you know, you'll be redirected to how to proceed forward. So there's a lot of details along this uh, protocol and uh, the other, the questionnaire, but a, a crucial things that I think are essential for us to know. Um, also, Throughout the studios, I'm trying. Let me try to show you guys. We actually um, came. We have some of the equipment here. That okay. actually, I just put it down. I, I'm going to need to go and grab a power cord while you're doing that. So go ahead and give the tour. And uh, okay. Because otherwise, so let me try. Drop out. Don't so leave let's us say we're walking in. So we walk in the studio, and actually, uh, before I show you guys the back, which is through those doors. Um, you go to this part, and actually, I put a petition. I put myself in the front of the studio, and I put a barrier right here, and I created a booth. I don't know if you guys, if I have the right angle or not. Yeah, we can see it, yeah. Yeah, but I put nice. my, my section in the front, and this, uh, this door over here, it closes, so I can have a, a little bit of uh, more barriers uh, when people come in. So right here, when you come to the studio, you'll be asked to sanitize your hands. And what we decided to do is we created this uh, places here that actually says sterilize for next client. What that is, is everybody on the staff will be responsible for after they um, do their consultations, which will be done here in the front. They're, they have to clean everything, so there's no guessing game. The responsibility is for each one of us to not to worry. Well, did he clean it up? Or did you lock the doors or anything like that? So that takes care of that. So it's the distance between us and the clients will be here in the front. Um, we ask them to bring masks for their appointment, but if not, we are providing masks there where we offer to them. And right here we can go through and there is a barrier stopping with different signs just to say should not pass this point. Uh, the doors, obviously I can uh, close it all the way if that was the case, but this is just to show a little bit of barrier. And as you go through the, the studio here, we have total of six stations in here. But what we decided to do is to is spread everybody apart. So we have five artists total and that room back there, that was my room, and we closed the center rooms right here. 
and we put the signs up so they won't sit, don't won't touch anything. This is get being deactivated for tattooing and also on the other side. So these two rooms are closed and the distance between all the, the booths are 12 feet or so apart. So we can actually be here and have a distance between us. So now there's the center lane right here. And if it comes down to it, you know what? We put a wall or plexiglass or whatever. I don't think that's going to be necessary, uh, but that can also be added to, to us. So the back here also, uh, they shouldn't be passing this point unless they're asking to go to the bathroom if they're a client that's here. We have a, a consultation area that was here. Now has been modified just for all the copiers and the necessities that we do. When we come in from the back, see if I can get, all right, if we come in from the back, the artist would be screened, the temperature would be taken, and here they pick up their mask for the day, uh, their, uh, their visor actually, and they have a plastic coating on them on the other side. So this here should be open in front of the client. Just like you take off your, um, your, your needles, you take the film from the front and that shows that that mask is brand new, has not been used. And that's pretty much it as far as the, you know, this is all the, the rooms there. And we try to clean up as much as possible to take uh, anything that's, uh, is net, that has a need for being clean and sterilized or anything like that. It sounds like really one of the main things in all of this, and I think this is going to be industry-wide, is communication with our clients. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's always been a, a big part. And, you know, some of us are better at it than others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've always put that front and center and, and I'm tattooing the same people I was tattooing 25 years ago. Uh, and I think that's part of it. But uh, we're going to have to really step that up. And I think that's probably one of the silver linings here is, is just developing stronger relationships with our clients. We'll probably find that we're doing more long-term custom work on clients because when when someone who's collecting tattoos gets comfortable with somebody, it's going to be a bigger deal than it used to be. Like, okay, yeah, I feel right. safe in the studio. Exactly. Uh, so let's hear from each of you uh, what your what you would hope for. This. What's your uh, silver lining you would hope to see as a result of this whole crisis? Uh, Liz, let's start with you. Uh, you know, I think I've kind of mentioned some of the silver lining stuff, like. I hope the whole world really pays attention a lot more to what cross-contamination is and um, can just globally step up those procedures and what's kind of gross and what we shouldn't be doing. And um, I think that would be my biggest hope. Okay. Chris, how about you? Uh, silver lining out of this whole thing, what would you hope to see? Uh, I think what we already see is that people are, as Liz said, are way more concerned about hygienic aspects and bring more focus on on hygienic stuff. That's, yeah. Yeah, basically anywhere that there were leftover holes in the uh, in our procedure, that uh, this, this is our time. Uh, oh. Jerk, what would you hope to see as the silver lining out of all this? I mean, definitely the awareness of how sterile tattooing really is. I would like to see <clears throat> tattooing kind of take the forefront on people actually realizing we've been doing this shit for years. We've been aware of your health. We've been aware of our health, of our clients' health, other people coming in. We've been dealing with, with viruses and hepatitis and HIV and, you know, things like that. So I'm hoping that there's a, a new awareness, even though tattooing is kind of being pushed off and, and disregarded by the older generation. I'm hoping out of all of this tattooing shines at the end of the day and, and people see just how much we've all gone above and beyond all these years. When I first started tattooing, I started taking training classes on, you know, one of the first things that scared me when I first started tattooing, I almost quit tattooing uh, from a guy that Marty, Marty, who works for me now, a guy named Tim Miller. I almost quit tattooing because I was afraid of Sounds like we've lost Durham here. Uh, hopefully we'll get him back. Yeah. Can you guys not hear me? Uh, yeah. For a second there, you were dropping out. Okay. So 
I just hope that tattooing, you know, at the end of the day shines and people realize that we are the forefront for all these procedures that are, you know, outside of the medical industry. I'm, I'm talking, you know, barbers have to deal with blood because they deal with razors and stuff like that. But I'm hoping at the end of the day that tattooing shines even more than it has as far as how truly sterile and safe it is. You know, with the precautions, you say communication is a big thing. The entry procedures in the tattoo studios like Lito's is showing. That's going to be the big thing. And then keeping your client contained, you know, I mean, above and beyond that, it's it's a flu. It's viral. You know, there's there there's so much we can do that we're already doing. We're going to add, add and implement these new precautions. And then, like Liz said, like it's going to happen. People are going to somebody's going to have COVID in your shop. You're going to run into that just like the common cold or flu, things like that. So I think at the end of the day, I want tattooing to, to shine and be ro more recognized as exactly how safe and sterile it's always been. And, and for our leadership, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. then, uh, Litos, do you have a silver lining that you'd like to see out of all this? Yeah, um, obviously is the, uh, the notion that uh, who we are as a profession, and that, that is huge. And I'm actually really excited for the fact that we've been suffering for a long time without being able to, you know, exercise what we love which is our art and connect with our clients and make a difference in their lives and, and make a living and all the above but i think it's exciting part to realize that this is our chance to really step it up um not only in a personal level artistically but as business owners as suppliers as all all the all the support that we give to our clients and i think this is a it's an opportunity for a transition for the tattoo industry to be looked at as something that's more than just a physical act of tattooing. We provide so much uh, that people don't really concentrate on that I think this problem, this uh, the whole barrier that, that we are facing right now, it's, it's about to, to burst into because of our own actions and again it's it's an opportunity to educate not only ourselves as artists who know where we sit but our clients as well and uh in society as a whole because the whole thing is that even as an idea you know it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have the classification just like they have in hotels like they have five star hotels and, uh, and and under that so we should have maybe some kind of a classification that if you have a business for the comfort of a client they will go to your door and that sticker will be there so hopefully something to that effect that physically is presented to the client before they walk into a store and maybe even be on your website or something like that to show that you know what these people are they pay their dues they're qualified they have a, a record of excellency and everything else so i would like to see that to be pursued somehow nice well you know what i, I think that one thing that's happened for a lot of artists, a silver lining out of this whole thing, is uh, we've been able to develop ourselves artistically in ways that we typically wouldn't really have time. We've got time to draw off the tattoos that we have to do that week. And often there's not much left in between. You know, we've got family and business and health and hygiene and sleep. And it's very hard. You know, a lot of the artists I've spoken with, uh, say that they haven't had this opportunity to paint or, or work with other media for a long yeah. time. So anyone out there who is an artist who's finding yourself feeling bored right now or cooped up, uh, that's a sign. You have an opportunity in your lap. Use this time. And one of the things that I've been doing that's been a lot of fun is I've reached out to a lot of artists that uh, I've worked with in the past, done collab uh, collaborative projects with, and initiated collaborations and we've been working on things both digitally and with paint. and uh normally there would not be time for that sort of thing i've got another painting project going on that normally i wouldn't have time for that's just too complicated uh i'm working on uh, a, a project with my daughter that we've been you know kind of putting off and you know we've, we had put a lot of hours into it in the past and it's kind of like okay let's get back into this there's a chance to focus on these things and so if, if you're finding yourself at loose ends, look at it as an opportunity, I think many of you have, to uh, develop yourself. Maybe take a class, uh, you know, look up an, an illustrator or a painter that you follow that you really like, and you might find that they are uh, also an educator and they've got classes that you can attend. So uh, I wanted to take a, a few minutes for audience questions before we wrap this up. Uh, 
uh, I guess Gabe will read some of those off to us. Cool. Uh, there's been a fair amount of chatting about uh, clothes and shoes. Is there? I don't, has anybody talked about having like work clothes or work shoes, scrubs? Yes, interesting point. And I know that like in the last year before this happened, I had started wearing these got you covered aprons, which are, you know, it doesn't cover your arms, it's, but it's a good apron that goes all the way down to the ankles. And it's one of those things where the minute you start wearing them, you're like, man, I can't tattoo without this now. <laughs> uh, but Michelle and I were just talking about like, okay, what about these things that the plumber puts on when they come into your house so that these overshoot things, are we going to start wearing those? Uh, Derb, you, uh, True suits, baby. Like True suits. They're coming. No. <laughs> They'll be like spacesuits for tattooing, man. Oxygen uh, imports, all kinds of shit. We're already on it. <laughs> it's good to know. Uh, I could see yeah. it moving in that direction, though, because I have heard, um, I don't know if it was something I saw written as a suggestion, but it was a change of clothes that the artists and the clients bring, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, we've seen some of that over here with um, potential ideas for just kind of getting back to work and safer ways to do it and how to do it. And there's been, you know, talk of like having a, a secondary set of clothes that's put in like a cubby or someplace safe that's away from, you know, your contaminated areas. Um, that being said, I've, and this wouldn't be very popular right now, but I've always been a fan of scrubs and especially starting in the permanent makeup world. That's what I started wearing. And it was great because they're so comfortable. And if you drop ink on it and it gets stained, you're not out this like awesome outfit and stuff. But obviously, you know, there's artistic expression of even the clothes that you wear. So whether that gets accepted, whether that's a thing, if it's, you know, if, you know, we have the option of wearing aprons or versus scrubs or whatever, just to change the clothes anyway. As long as they're black, we'll wear them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are going to start wearing those sleeves too. You know, I was one of the last ones to adopt those. Uh, yeah. But you, you know, carry like, those now because of the need, because we know that the industry is changing. So, yeah, we've stepped up to the disposable sleeve covers and stuff. I yeah. think that's going to be kind of the universal thing that people add to their PPEs is the mask, the face shield. Yeah, the disposable sleeves like Lito's has and gloves. That'll be the new. And then the scrubs are a great idea. If we could find the scrubs, you know, I'd like to be able to provide those too um, if they're black. Yeah. And so yeah. this is the thing that, this is the thing that bothers me the I most. I don't know if you guys ever used like UV color and put it into, into water and just tattoo its fake skin for 15 minutes. But when you're doing that, and after that, you're going with the UV light over the surfaces and stuff, you will see that it's everywhere. And when you then imagine you're having this aerosols like for eight hours straight to doing somebody, I think when you're going like really from the 100% safety perspective, don't get any of this, you will be at derp set in a spacesuit. <laughs> Here we go, guy. That's kind of a scary yeah. vision. Do you have, do you have tattooing photos? on tattooing? Uh, uh -huh. Chris, do you have photos of the uh, of somebody with that black light test? No, I don't have photos, but I know that a couple of cross contamination trainings for young artists and stuff doing that. I've That's actually participated in a black light one like that before um, where our hands were contaminated with it. You had to go wash your hands off what you thought was thoroughly. And, you know, after they were like, oh, by the way, let's see how good you did. So some people did really well. And then, you know, other people didn't do as well. Uh, I, but I think it's a really I think it's something that would be so awesome to see in just our regular bloodborne training classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I took that class too, and I learned the term interdigitation that day. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a disturbing photo I'm going to show you. It's uh, that this is on national TV, and this okay. is a dental office, and the person is actually placing, you know, the bib with the little metal thing, and and again, this is on national TV and CNN to be specific. And you guys can know so many things here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. 
Oh, geez. Uh. Well, let's just point out the really nice wedding ring and no gloves. And her hand with the regular sleeve is mushed into her, the client's face. Yeah, it's touching. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just, I, man, I fell off I'm talking about watching this stuff. It was like, you got to be kidding me. Now, these people are allowed to open and yeah. wear that? Yeah, exactly. Yep. It'd be that funny. I mean, pathetic. honestly, if there was a group of tattooers that could go around to even a dentist's office, we could educate them so much. Not to sound like we're above them, but honestly, like as far as cross true cross contamination, touching lights, touching anything, we could yep. probably teach them something. Oh yeah, how often you actually have to change your gloves? Mm -hmm. Exactly. No yeah. barrier. Well, did here. you guys did you guys know that actually? Uh, I found out from a, a client friend of ours, and he has a chiropractor, um, you know, office, and actually he has another service. There's a massage therapist, and she's allowed to conduct business under his roof only if she works on his clientele. So what? I'm thinking, yeah. So <laughs> now, because she's under his roof as a chiropractor, she can actually conduct massage therapy, which is under his roof, which is in the same category as we are in barbershops, and which they're not open yet, but she is open. Hmm. So basically, so should I me. rent a room from him and this tattoo at a chiropractor? <laughs> office? I could do that. Yeah, right. You know, it's just, it's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Any more good audience mean, questions? Yeah. So there's a, also a, a, the question about the because uh, this is airborne, the aerosolized uh, nature of tattooing and venting and airflow, I guess, is the question. So is, what, yep. what can we do or is there a way to mitigate if someone's asystematic? Is it just going in through the vents to all the different rooms? Or? One thing that we're doing here, Red Tree, no fans, no kind of, I mean, no extra ventilation. Like normally you have a fan on your client to keep them cool. We've got rid of all the fans. We put in, we didn't put in the HEPA filters. We put in MERV 13 filters because our, our studio has a different filtration system than the lo even the lower half of our studio, which is nice because I could focus on just the tattooing area. I put in Mer MERV 13 filters for now, um, but the only other precaution as far as ventilation is no fans or anything like that. Um, well, it's tricky because it. almost all uh, air circulation systems are at least somewhat directional, right? So then you've yeah. got the problem of, you know, I'm thinking about like uh, my workstation right there. Uh, there's the climate control and it's not ever been an issue before it disperses nicely you know but there's definitely a direction that's flowing and so who's getting whose secondhand crap right shit and, we've never had to think yeah. about like right? that is that's and a new way of thinking with tattooing yeah yeah that is almost uh, i wouldn't say impossible not in, nothing is impossible but look at the laboratories when you have sections step by step so you get to a one section and then from there, you open this door, the sterilization area. Then you have the actual, you know, uh, ground zero of it. And even if we have a filtration system, a something that will kill airborne viruses and bacteria, what about the people that just walked in that are contaminated and it's just on that environment? So it's a very hard thing to really... Oh. Yeah, to really be 100% sure. One thing that I wanted to do that I thought for a minute after I thought it, because of the liability content, is actually get those tests that actually you can get in 15 minutes to get a result. So everybody not only will be taking the temperature at the door, but we will be taking that uh, test to see if they're positive of the virus. But then again, I'm not a medical professional. So I can't really tell people, oh, yeah, you're okay. So just come out to my business and God forbid something happens, I'm liable for it. So you can even do that as a precaution. Do you think that tattoo studios will be held liable for, I mean, has any business yet, I guess that's the question, been held liable for somebody catching COVID? I mean, I believe that's probably why the NBA shut down. They didn't want these uh, massive lawsuits. So uh, has there been any kind of inkling of people getting in trouble for others getting sick in their business? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. No. no, I think I've seen like online people kind of write about it, but it's been there's so many tattooers that have just jumped on after that to kind of be like, okay, prove it. Yeah.
Right. And, and kind of, you see a lot of people out there without, like you go to the stores, man, there's people without masks. Yeah. So, so you can't really hold somebody liable if our you decide not to wear a mask. Or our stores else. aren't social distancing like they're supposed to. The no. Walmart, the Market no. Street, like, I mean, I've fortunately, Cookie's been doing everything for me because, you know, I'm high risk. We're pregnant. So he's been going and I'm like, well, what's the social distancing like? And he's like, nobody's doing anything. They're more packed than they were before because they have less hours to operate in. And people don't know how to not cross contaminate. They wear the same gloves. They touch their face still. They're doing dumb stuff. So, you know, he has to be extra careful, but prove it. (laughs) Prove that you got it in a tattoo studio. Ow. Just like you were saying how, okay, because they're open for shorter hours, there end up being more people there. So in, in some ways, they don't reduce the risk by uh, changing their hours, right? Or I went to a home improvement place the other day, and they're trying to limit the number of people in there at any given time, which sounds good, but then everyone else gets put in a line. So they're all breathing each other there while they're waiting to go in. So the, the, the cure is worse than the, the disease there, you know what I mean? It's, it's not necessarily preventing anything so because we're dealing with smaller amounts of people than a home improvement center i think we can be a lot tighter about uh limiting the flow of, of people and and their air through our spaces now there are filters out there that use uv bulbs that can kill uh viruses and of course that's not going to limit what somebody's breath might flow past you but it might reduce the virus count in your air overall but ultimately, you know, everyone should be wearing that uh, that mask anyway. Yeah, uh, just just to the point of uh, everybody, uh, Walmart being closed. There's a couple of WalMarts in Massachusetts where the shit went rampant and burned through people. So it's that's not cool. No, no. Yeah, the big problem too is. Go ahead. Oh no, go. No, your turn. The uh, you know the fact with this virus, like you know Derba's talking about it, you guys say it's mutating to different you know outlets. That it's like, whoa, this is new. I can go in here too, and that's going to happen regardless. And the other thing that's going to happen too is the fact that we can't be completely uh, isolated from it because, as we know, as a species, we need to be exposed to create uh, you know uh, antibodies and protections for ourselves. So that is very important, but it has to be done in a time fashion. So that would take time for us to start, or uh, the virus to, or our body to start assimilating the virus. Say, okay, I remember you, and boom, I'm gonna block you. And that takes a while. Uh, so the yeah. time, I think, is the best. Idea. We need time to be able to let our bodies adjust to it in very, very small increments. And that's pretty much out there. Everything you kind of touch without you know, clean your hands or breathing slightly, you know, there is a, a, a percentage that you can inhale to find out how much of an impact on how quickly you get it. Yeah, I mean, there's so much about the science of this that, that we don't really know because yeah. it's novel. And that's, of course, the reason why there's so many precautions being taken. And uh, I think a lot of us are hoping that we can hold out long enough uh, until some kind of vaccine comes out or some kind of much better treatment if you do get sick, uh, you know, like a Tamiflu sort of thing that actually works uh, on COVID. And that'll allow us to let our guard down a little bit. But uh, we collectively as, as humanity and, and as tattooists have this stretch of time until that moment, you know, we're looking at 18 months to two years yep. to, uh, to puzzle this thing out. Um, Are there any final questions before we wrap this up? Um, I think that if we get all of the links in the description, so if everybody could, um, I got a bunch of links already. If anybody wants to keep sending them, then I'll edit the description for any future questions. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, I was just saying there's some questions for links. Oh, okay. So we could add them to the description. Contacts. Yeah, let's just run through that real quick so everybody's findable. Um, let's start with uh, Liz. You were first on. How can people find you? Uh, I'm at Liz Cook. 
Oh my gosh, these are questions that my husband always does. Uh, I'm on Instagram under Liz Cook Tattoo. I'm also uh, under Liz Cook PMU. Um, also through Rebel Muse Tattoo um, and Rebel Muse Dallas, and now going to be also under Rebel Muse Denver. Nice. Thank Holy you. crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, Derb, what's your contact? How can people find you? I mean, they can find me Derb Morrison on Instagram or, uh, or Facebook. I prefer people go, just going to Red Tree, like especially at this moment. If you go to redtreetattoo.com, you can see, you can get links to all my artists, to myself, uh, all the social medias. But also I want to say on there too, like when this all started, um, I started creating a, a section on our website. So if you go to redtreetattoo.com, if you go to the about section, down from there, you'll see a COVID-19 guidelines. Those are the guidelines, things that we're going to be doing that we're asking our clients to do, separate things that our artists are going to do. I've also put on um, procedures and protocols we've changed here uh, at the studio. And we also have like the release form <clears throat> and the information that we're sending our clients. Um, and like Lido said too, I'm making all this stuff, you know, uh, public. So you guys can literally copy it, paste it on your sites if you want to, to for everybody to get a nice head start and be collectively together. But if you go to redtreetattoo.com, uh, you can find everything on there. Nice. Uh, Chris, where can we find you? Uh, on Instagram, Chris will copy, but for all Cheyenne stuff, it's the best to write on Instagram uh, for Cheyenne Professional Tattoo Equipment or on our website, cheyennetattoo.com. Because then when you're using the contact form, it's going directly to a responsible person for this specific question. So that's the best way. Outstanding. Outstanding. Litos, where can we find you? Um, I'm on Instagram under Litos Art and uh, the email litosart1 at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, it will be important too because all of us are trying to put out there, you know, uh, our, our doors open to, to everyone that has questions. Uh, Derb when outside you know the, the the realm to really help people there's a lot of good information in his site and i think it would be necessary not only to do this uh conversations a little more often even when it's open uh i think we should continue to be united to be educating people and to be making a difference on this uh illusion that people think about uh, tattooing destroy the image of it and maybe create even a a, a group that actually was out there bias to everyone as a unit to to help every, you know not every state every business uh to every level and uh, i think it could make a big difference to give comfort to people and and, and shine a light you know, to, to this thing that's kind of taken a lot already yes well you know on that note let's let's remind everyone out there that if your state is being hesitant about opening or not communicating Think about doing things that you can, you know, like, like uh, Litos is dealing with. Think about doing <laughs> something to bring positive awareness. We're not talking about a loud demonstration with spittle flying. Uh, we're talking about what uh, they almost had to do in Ohio, which is to have a, an educational demonstration to show the public what tattoo artists do uh, already to, to be one of the safest industries that there is and what we're going to be doing uh, during this pandemic uh, to continue rising to that challenge. Uh, you may need to reach out to other tattooers in your state, the ones that you get along with well and, and the ones that you admire the most, uh, the ones that have a long standing uh, you know, place in the industry. Chances are some of them already uh, have an idea of who to talk to in the state. And uh, if all else fails, you can just do something public that is, is a, a classy, well-planned demonstration to show the world and to show the, the press in your state, uh, the leadership in the tattoo community and, and what we are, are capable of in, in terms of keeping the public safe. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Guy, one more question. Okay. When is the next time you're doing something like this? We, okay, the next time we're doing something like this, we may do a few more single serving discussions like this, but we've got a big event planned on the 26th and 27th of this month. So we're going to have a number of seminars. We've got Carrie Barba uh, on board. We've got Nick Baxter. Uh, Chris Lachance uh, is going to be doing a, a detailed COVID safety step-by-step -step type seminar. 
Uh, we've got Sean Barber, who's going to do a late night a la prima paint session. Uh, we're going to be doing a drawn critique. We've got uh, Russ Abbott on board for that. Uh, and there are going to be a number of other, uh, you know, demonstrations and uh, you know, other webcast goodies over the course of those two days. So these are going to be two long days of really awesome webcasts. Everything is free. Uh, so we're hoping that you can uh, come by and, uh, and check it out. Uh, I'll be making posts about that very soon. Um, but uh, you can always see whatever I've got uh, going on. The latest news, which is not always super up to date, you can find it my Instagram profile, Guy H's and Art. Uh, that's the one social media that I actually do myself. Uh, you can also find me at hyperspacestudios.com or guyhs.com. But uh, thanks everyone for joining this panel and to everyone who tuned in and uh, had questions for us. Uh, it's great that we can keep this conversation going and. Um, we will keep doing this. So everyone, you have a great day and we'll let you all know when the next one is. Excellent. Thanks everyone. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Yeah, definitely.